joining the Nerds of Color today. Um, no problem. I, thank you. I am a huge Legends of Tomorrow fan. Uh, I love this show so much. And it's basically everyone I've spoken to about the show, they talk about how much they love the variety of the material they work with. Legends basically does it all. So what's it like show running a show like this? And is there anything you y'all haven't done yet you want to do in the future? Oh man, that's a it's a big question and a, a lot with a lot of components. But I will say as a showrunner of a show like this, it is a delight. It's a delight that every episode we are free to pick our genre um, and really dive into it and hopefully, you know, um, subvert it in a, in a really cool, surprising way. I mean, we're all fans of, you know, of genre and um, to, to get to explore those different worlds every time we tell a story is just a wonderful opportunity. And the fact that our crew are superheroes themselves and that they can make these worlds come to life and always with such incredible care and passion and artistry, you know, it makes, you know, see when we get to see those dailies and we get to see those cuts, it's just really is like, wow, we pulled it off somehow. Everyone pulled it off and it looks amazing. So it's, it's always exciting. It's always, it's always different. It's never the same. And for both myself and Phil, I know that is something that is very alluring uh, about working on a show like this is, is the variety. Um, and, you know, our characters, it's the, it's the same thing. But again, the, the thing that I think grounds it all is the fact that we know who these characters are so intimately. And they all do have such distinct voices and backgrounds that, again, it's never stale. And every episode, you can combine different characters and those different dynamics in and create a really compelling story that is about something very human you know I think at the, at the core of every episode we do it's it's a human story it's an emotional story it's about emotional growth and about emotional challenges and about friendships and love and betrayals and you know all these really juicy human topics so yes it's really fun to to do the top genres and to create wonderful spectacles but I think if it doesn't have that human element at it's front and center. It's not worth telling. Um, so we, we don't, that's, we, we don't do that. No. Yeah. I love that. It's so fundamentally about that human connection, even when they're in all these fantastical settings. Um, I'd like to ask more about what you feel you bring to the table in terms of your own influences from genre that you put mm -hmm. into legends of tomorrow. That's really inspired you. Sure. Well, I am a fan girl have been my entire life. Uh, starting, you know, from a very young age, uh, you know, huge love of comic books and horror movies and science fiction. And um, yeah, it's just, I ate it all up uh, as a little kid. So, you know, that's been part of my sort of writer DNA um, for my entire creative existence. And I, you know, I've also traveled a lot when I was growing up. Um, my mother, she's an ethnomusicologist. So I studied music from around the world and, and traveled around the world and performed music and stayed in people's homes. And, you know, I, I have that sort of wave rider upbringing in a way where I was someone who lived for long periods of time on a bus with a bunch of eclectic characters from all different backgrounds, um, every night having a mission, which was to put on a concert, put on a show, you know, but in, a, in the midst of all of that, there was a lot of drama, there were affairs, there was, you know, people falling in and out of love and, you know, and getting annoyed with each other and having these rivalries and all of that. And I, you know, having lived that kind of existence, that's something I bring to the show is, is again, when we're talking about human characters and their relationships to one another, I've, I've lived in this environment and I, you know, I, I, I do bring that sort of sensibility of like, okay, if you were going to be living in this contained space and moving around and going from place to place, like what are the sorts of things that happen between people when you do that? So um, that's, that's one thing. And then of course, just the love of the genre and, uh, and a deep, you know, fascination with um, the strange and the fun and exciting. I love that so much. So 
onto this season, it starts off really dire for the legends. They're stuck in 1925. They have to navigate being stuck there and not trying to change the timeline. He was especially worried about this. Uh, you and your coach, Owen, or Phil Klemmer have stated that the season will sort of be like a real life odyssey as they attempt to get home to the Wave Riders. So what was it like to change up the typical game for our time traveling superheroes and how will this challenge them? It has been so much fun, <laughs> so much fun to change up the way that both we approach the show and that the legends have to approach their existence. You know, that the fact that they can't rely on the tools that they normally do. They, you know, couriers, flashers, the wave rider that fabricates their food and, you know, takes them anywhere they, anywhere or any when they want to go, you know, suddenly with that gone, you know, they have to reevaluate their methods. And, and how not just the way that they interact with one another, but the way that they interact with their surroundings. Because on a typical Legends mission before this, they could kind of cause a mess and then boop, they're gone and they never have to really worry about it. But being trapped in this time period really comes with consequences. And having to see the people in these time periods in a different way. Whereas before they were just sort of in the background or sort of obstacles or, you know, um, or kind of caricatures in a way, or, you know, that we sort of would see for a moment and sort of forget about, suddenly they're real people. So they're having to live, really live in a time period when with that comes, again, consequences for their actions, um, people as people and not just, you know, things that people that they pass you know uh, and know very little bit about it's like you, you when you're when you're trapped in a place you kind of have to get to know the locals a little bit better and that comes with its own complications and how specifically will this season explore the effects for the legend of color namely astra esperanza zari and behrad being stuck in mm -hmm. this time frame oh goodness yeah it's it's not something that we shy away from um we want to deal with the challenge that it would present um, for these characters, because that's it's very real and it's and it's something that is is real not just for our performers but for people on our staff as well. We we didn't want to gloss over that and be like, oh, they're fine, you know, like just pretend, pretend, you know. No, so um, yeah, Astra deals with it um, pretty head on and in her very astral way of being like i'm not gonna take this bs you know i'm i'm gonna do something about it um and spooner is a little bit more careful because as she discovered in the last season you know she's actually from this time period so she's a little bit more cautious initially but she kind of quickly gets on board with this like you know what we're gonna sort of be who we are and and um you know not take anything on the chin and uh for the tarazis too you know there's there's definitely uh, and there's a, uh, you know, definitely some challenges and, you know, people being full on racist, you know, and for uh, Zari, you know, she's, she hasn't really ever had to deal with that sort of um, reality. That's uh, certainly not the way she was raised in this version of her. So, you know, having to see the ugliness of that definitely chafes her, but she quickly finds an opportunity to empower another person of color that she meets on the road and in a way, um, you know, sort of finds a, a victory in that, in, um, you know, in, in helping this person, uh, you know, deal with something bad that happened to, to them um, in, within the episode. And then also Astra in the season, you know, will, will, will have a, a pretty significant um, episode where she's, she's having to sort of deal with her own sort of emotions surrounding this issue and having to look towards an elder, someone else who is, has de is dealing with it in a different way and learn sort of the value of, um, of taking a breath and thinking things through before you act. Sounds amazing. So is there anything you can tell us about the villains for this season? And will we find out who or what blew up the wave rider at the end of season six? Like it was such a shock for everyone watching yeah. and including a shock at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one thing we are doing a little bit different this season that we don't normally do is we're going to be a little bit more upfront about our season mythology um, and about who, you know, who did what. And the reason for that is that 
we really want, again, to focus on the characters and their growth and not string the audience along unnecessarily with a mystery that I think ultimately the conclusion is not, you know, wouldn't be as satisfying if we drew it out to the very end and like, ta-da, this is the bad guy. Like, I think it'd be kind of like, oh, okay, you know, why did, why did you hold on to that information? You know, it's actually more interesting for the audience to understand what's going on and to then deal with the ramifications of those revelations and of the twists that come with with what you think is happening and then how it gets more complicated, um, both for um, the, the legend side, but also from the bad guy side. So we're sort of telling parallel stories in a way of both what's happening with our legends as they're trying to get home and the origin story for this villain and how things get turned on their head partway through the season. You know, So we, we didn't wanna hold back the way that we sometimes do. Nice, I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah. I have a couple, Two other uh, sort of more fun questions. I'll just ask sure. them in succession. So who would be a dream guest star for you to have on the show? And somewhat related to that, mm. what other DC characters would you like to have on the show and maybe interact or be part of the legends? Maybe you can oh, answer them man. at once. <laughs> oh, goodness. An actor that I would love to have on the show. Um, that's a tough one. Um... I mean, there's so many. <laughs> um, I mean, I would love to, I would love to have someone like Ken Watanabe, like someone who is, you know, Japanese, that's very, you know, representation is very important to me, but also just to have that energy that like elder statesman, noble, like, you know, just that, that energy coming into play with these, like this sort of ragtag group of chaotic people, I think would be really fun. Um, and in terms of a character, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Batman universe. Uh, it's what I grew up on. It's what I was, it was very much my bread and butter for a long time. Um, I would probably want a fun, you know, one of the, someone from the rogues gallery to, to make an appearance, you know, someone like, I mean, Two-Face was always my favorite. I think he would be really fun. And so to do sort of like a legends take on Two-Face, which would, uh, you know, Maybe, maybe it's certainly mine, the darkness, but I think we try to find a hum humorous take on the split personality thing and, and, and make both of those people characters um, who would have relationships with people on the ship, you know? I think we'd love to see it. Um, yeah. Keto Shimizu, thank you so, so much for speaking with Birds of Color today. And I'm just really excited for everyone to watch this season. I think it's going to be fantastic. And you all have a great day. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. The hard knock life. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play. So check this.